are you both? Very well. Absolutely fine. Uh, what have you been up to recently? I've just this morning driven back from the Theatre Royal Nottingham, where I've been working with the great <coughs> Nicholas Briggs. <laughs> <laughs> India, we, we hear you all the time. All the time, yes, I don't know, I'm sure we're not the only people who recognise you all the time. We're sitting at home, the telly, and you come on. I don't on. think anyone else knows you, who I am, really. <laughs> sure uh, my do. friends do. Um, what, what are the various things you've been up to recently? Uh, well, apart from MasterChef, which is the, the job that keeps on giving. God, I love it. <laughs> um, uh, I did a, an episode of Doctors. It'll be coming out. Not the at same some one that Colin did, presumably. No, did, has Colin just yes, done an Colin episode of Doctor? Doctor? Has he's he? Done he? Everybody's done telling everyone yeah. does Doctors. <laughs> yes. No. I. Um, uh, it was good fun. Actually, it was very nice. No, not the same one, sadly. And um, yeah, apart from that, just sort of you know, same old, same old. Really. Um, yeah, but we know you primarily, of course, from Big Finish and doing the Doctor Who audios. Is that something, because I'm, I'm a bit out of place, is that something you're both still actively involved with at the minute? I'm not sure about you, India, because there's been an interesting story. I've, I've, I've just, I have finished my final story. But, right. but judging by everyone that was talking to me whilst I was doing signings, no one believes me. Everyone thinks, <laughs> I'm, just, everyone thinks I'm just, like, you know, whinging on to make people come. I'm you're like, going to be resurrected. Well, we hope, I, although I was very pleased to hear that you did your final story, like, six years ago or something. Ages ago. Time. Excellent, so that's good. <laughs> They set a good precedent. And I'm still going. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> so do you, do you find it difficult, because it's quite an unusual position to be in, where you're recording one story and then it might be six months, even a year, before we hear from you again? So, I mean, Maggie, do you find that um, difficult to keep the consistency going with the character, for example? No, no, I don't think so, because I, I think in many ways uh, I share a lot of Evelyn's characteristics. Um, and so it's not as though I'm, I'm getting into somebody who is totally, totally different from me. Uh, and so I just pick her up as you pick up, a, you know, a favourite cardigan or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel very similar about Charlie, actually. Absolutely. <laughs> they obviously just, yeah, they write sort of basically for who you are. So, Charlie, I, I sort of forget that I'm playing her. I don't yes. really have to think. It's not something you have to think about playing her you just know that that's how she is yes yeah, it's right. not something both of you didn't start playing the characters you you had different roles with big finish didn't you so how did it actually to go back to the start how did you actually find yourself in playing that character playing charlie yeah. um well i got um i got a phone call from jason that's sorry I've, I've said this story many times but um i've got a phone call from jason and he's uh i'd done winter for the adept and um he said how would you feel about being paul mcgann's companion and that was, quite a, that was quite a happy moment for me, I have to say. Yes. So I said yes, you know, I thought about it for a while and then said yes. And um, yeah, sort of, so uh, then got the script of Storm Warning and, you know, uh, Alan Barnes's script was just so amazing that Charlie was just there, fully formed, on the page. I didn't actually have to do any work at all as an actor. It wasn't like I had to sort of discover this character. It, she was just, she just popped out at you. So very lazy and very easy for me, really. What about you, Maggie? You're in a story called Sirens of Time. First yes, of all. yes, I was. And the, the only reason that I ever started with Big Finish was all down to Nick Briggs because we'd worked together a few years before on stage. We'd toured with a production of Jane Eyre. Anyway, and uh, then I hadn't seen him for a little bit. And he rang me one day and he said, I've got a nice little part, a radio. We're doing a recording. Um, nice part for you as a character actress. She's um, part Russian, part German, and half warthog. <laughs> and I said, thanks a bunch, Nick, thanks a bunch. Yes, I would be quite interested to do it. And that was the very first, that was the, the Sirens of Time, because I was an alien in that. And I did one or two other small parts, and some people here today have got the covers for um, thing I did with Lisa Bauman um, and then one day uh, I was working again with Nick Briggs again on stage and during a break he said um, oh he said um, you're gonna be the next companion for um, for Colin Baker I said oh, am I <laughs> no, nobody's told me and in fact Jason was kind enough to say they'd actually written it they invented Evelyn Smythe for me, mm. which was the most amazing compliment. Yeah. And um, 
it's just been thrilling ever since. Yeah, I think it, it's quite an important point that they'd, your character's kind of a bit unique in, well, very well, unique in Doctor Who history in that there's not a companion like Evelyn. And I think that that's something that the audios gave to the series that, yes. that we didn't have otherwise. She is different. Uh, I think, do you think that's why she's kind of very appreciated? I think perhaps she is, but somebody, somebody explained to me some time ago that when they started on the television, the, the companions all had to be young and sort of inexperienced because through the, the companion saying, oh, I don't understand, mm. what's all this about? Then the doctor could explain what was happening to the audience uh, that they were aiming at, which you know was a, a young audience. Um, but of course, uh, the things that I've done have not been aimed at a young audience, and they thought it was time that Colin Baker had an older companion and somebody who would argue with him yeah. a bit. So that was why Evelyn was invented. I think yeah. it's brilliant, actually. I love it, the idea. I, I, of, yeah. Yeah, I love the companion, the whole idea of it. Yeah, well. yeah, the idea of actually being on an equal footing with the Doctor and sparring with him rather than, yes, as you say, I spend my entire time going, Doctor, why? <laughs> yeah, Doctor, think, where are we I going? Think, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so. different as she is. Charlie's more of a, a more similar to the Doctor Who companions. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah. She was that sort of wide eyed, yes, yeah. sort of, you know, sort of. Tell me about this, Doctor. Explain it. You're so <laughs> clever. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that made it easier or harder to play? Oh, well, as I say, she's a, she's a joy to play, yeah. But um, I was very glad with Charlie um, that I was, I was slightly aware of my limited knowledge of um, previous Doctor Who. I do hold my hands up for not having ever really watched it. Um, sorry. Uh, and I always felt that the companions were, you know, sort of constantly falling over and like, oh, I've been captured. And, you know, as a child, that annoyed me. And I didn't realise, of course, that was just a, you know, a plot device. Because if, mm. uh, you know, if... Uh, and then it allows you to split the companion and the doctor up. So I was very keen on the fact that Charlie wasn't going to be a sort of, you know, yeah. a pathetic character mm. who, and one that whinged a lot. I seemed, to, my reality of them was that they were constantly, you thought, why, didn't, why doesn't the doctor just throw them off at the nearest <laughs> planet? You know, they're constantly whinging. Either enjoy it or don't. And so I loved the fact that Charlie was just, you know, sort of up for yeah. anything and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you had some pretty good material to work with, oh. didn't you? In Neverland, for example, mm. when you see you know, the characters and you as an actress as well, really tested, I suppose. Auntie Charlie, yes, yeah. yes, it was classic, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then Nick always, always um, takes the mickey out of me for my, um, I didn't realise I was doing it, but whilst we were recording, I'd be playing Charlie, and then when I played Auntie Charlie, apparently I put my hands on my hips. <laughs> and he just like fell about and this is always um and actually there's a not to give too much away but there's a sort of similar thing in the final three stories oh, maybe right. there's a oh. bit of like you know talking to yeah. myself quite a lot, lot and that was yeah that was acting. well that was quite interesting yes yeah, so yeah. a little bit schizophrenic i, I mean, did feel quite it's schizophrenic. interesting really with doctor who coming back with a strong female companion mm. character in a way charlie was kind of well, I have to say, really yes, I got first. Russell T. Davis sent me a lovely email. I mean, I sent, I was basically plugging for work yeah. when I found out, found out that he was like going to be <laughs> revamping the, uh, the the series. So I was like, sent him an email going, you know, I'm so thrilled that you're doing it. Isn't this amazing? And he sent one very lovely back saying, you know, I, I couldn't have created the character of Rose mm. without Charlie having sort of gone there already. My initial reaction to that was like, well, give me the bloody job. <laughs> <laughs> It was fine, you know, I'm, I'm over it now, it's fine. Um, uh, but no, it was, it was a very lovely compliment, the idea that Charlie sort of bridged that gap and allowed people to have a sort of a bit more of a modern and ballsy, dare I say it, uh, companion. And did you actually, you've watched the series when it came back on telly? I watched some of them. Not all of them? <laughs> no, not all of them. No, no, no I'm sorry. There are a lot of them now, are there? There are a lot of them, yeah. yeah. I mean, what did you think of it when you saw it? Oh, I mean, it's amazing. And it's, you know, and it's, it's deserved its uh, sort of stratospheric fame, hasn't it? And, yeah. it's sort of, and it's that idea that, like, being a Doctor Who fan is now cool again. Do you know, it's yeah. like suddenly, when I first started doing these, people would come up and go, <coughs> um, I'm a Doctor Who fan. And, sort of, and, you'd be like, and now everyone's like, yeah, I love Doctor Who, I'm a Doctor Who fan. And uh, so it's like, yeah, it's gone and gone are the, the days yeah. when people would, because people would come up and go, you're India Fisher. And I go, so that means you're a Doctor Who fan. And they'd be like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if anyone knew who I was. <laughs> but now, be proud, people. 
Um, Maggie, do you, have you seen the, the new series? And oh yes, I've seen I've seen some of them because I've got quite a lot of grandchildren. Oh right, you see, so, <laughs> you get to watch it all so the time. they watch it. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And, and and that's my main claim to fame in the family, right? Because <laughs> I'm I'm connected with Doctor Who. I mean, you know, Granny doesn't matter, but because <laughs> Granny, <laughs> Doctor Who, oh. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting actually that to a certain extent, before the series came back, you could call the audio as a kind of niche, but all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're the same brand as something which is, you know, hugely popular. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, is that, is that something you've, have you found the attitudes towards Doctor Who and your role in Doctor Who has changed since the series came back? Uh, it's, it's, it's a weird thing in the fact that uh, you sort of say to people, people go, oh, you do Doctor Who? And you go, yeah, the audios, and they go, oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh right, okay. But like, you know, and it's, so you do sort of have to find people go, oh, you on the telly? No, 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 do the audio version of it. But um, I think it's just, it's just brilliant that the whole, like, you know, sort of the profile of the, the whole genre has, like, yeah. you know, increased, and deservedly so. Yeah. So, Maggie, had you mm. worked with Colin before you did the Big Finish adventures no. with him? You hadn't. No, I didn't. I didn't know him at all. I mean, I knew of him, and I'd seen him uh, work on television, but I'd never met him in the right. flesh. Um, but we just clicked oh, right. yeah. when when we met, and um, we we've always got on very very well, which you know, makes it all much more fun. It does come mm. over really that you've got that good. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. Yes, people say that to me. They say, you you can you can sort of sense it yeah. in the uh, in the recordings, and I think, and I'm sure India will agree that this often comes over on stage oh, as well. Uh, yeah. If you've got a happy company, if you're doing a play, and you all get on very well, yeah. and you've got a happy company. I mean, members of the audience have told me this before, you know. Well, we, we, we can tell mm. that you... Oh, there's nothing... I know that when I'm in an audience, if you see people enjoying themselves on stage, whatever, whether it's in a band or anything, you know, it's much better than people looking bored or angry with oh, one another. Yes. It's like, it's a terrible Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. But I have to say, I felt exactly the same way with... Because for me, it was, a bit, it was going to be a bit of a weird thing moving over to Colin. As yeah. to, and, like, and on the first day, I was thinking... You know, and I knew that you and Colin had worked so, and I felt like I was being a little bit crowbarred <laughs> into Colin, and whether Colin was, and he was just so lovely, and as oh, you say, just instantly clicked with him, and he's just such a talented actor that mm. it's, a, you know, it's a joy. It's rather, it is unique in, in having been acted across two doctors on all. Yeah, so is that unique? Yeah, I think yeah. It is, yeah. So we're well, not acted, but with as a, yeah, as yeah. a character, I think. Yeah. Um, was that actually the plan all along? Yeah. I know it was a, a surprise no, I don't think to so. us at the time. No, no, it was a complete surprise to me. Oh, right. um, <laughs> so you um, thought that was it? With, when the th th that, yeah, that was it, yes. And this is why everyone's, everyone's sitting there going, oh, yeah, 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 we've heard it all before from you, Fisher. Like, this, <laughs> the, the, I was genuinely told when the McGann stories came to an end that they were moving to uh, Radio 7 and uh, they needed a name, therefore my services were no longer required. And that was like... The, Right, okay, thanks, big finish. But, um, uh, and then, like, and so I thought that was, you know, I really genuinely thought, you know, oh, well, it's been a good run, but there we go. And then Nick very sweetly said, we've been thinking about this and we can't let you go and therefore we're going to move you over to Colin. And then it was like, for three stories. Okay, for four <laughs> more stories. And now, and now they are, now it is, <laughs> now I promise you, it has all been resolved. But we will wait and see. But you have to wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. So what was it like working with, with Colin compared with Paul and <laughs> same or different? <laughs> different, different, very different. Different uh, styles maybe? Yeah, completely different styles and completely yeah. different actors. And, you know, and it's the same with everyone that does their, their, the idea that Doctor Who, whoever takes it on, it becomes a completely different, you know, character and person. And so Paul's Doctor is very different to Colin's Doctor. Um, but um, I loved, you know, I mean, I'm, I loved working with Paul. He, he taught me an immense amount just from watching him work because yeah. I'd never really done any audio before that and uh, but as I said Colin he just came in and it just felt happy and uh, and like you know at ease and he's such he's so good at making everybody feel welcome which is you know while you're recording it which is for me the point of the star yeah. or the doctor is they're the one that's meant to you know they set the tone and Colin is just such fun to work with that it's just a, it's just a joy mm -hmm. and everyone everyone comes out like going this is great which is you know, <laughs> um, with Paul I got the impression from the earlier play certainly that he was often required to 
to record his parts up in Bristol, was it? Or we all went up to Bristol, yeah, yeah, we all went up there. Was whether you had to record, you still got to record with him. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, God, you couldn't do, you couldn't build a relationship no. like that without actually being in the room. I mean, there, you know, things like this are grey, as everyone knows that there were points that mm. people had to be sort of, you know, Conrad yeah. did a lot of reading in for everyone else. Um, but no, 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 we all, we all trooped up to um, Bristol, and yeah. actually it was very lovely, because it was like sort of doing a proper play, mm. because they then... We did four in a week, and so they cross-cast them so that they, you know, and we all stayed in the same hotel, so you ended up in the bar together and, like, you know, and uh, not with Paul, because right. Paul yeah. lived in Bristol, so he went home <laughs> to his wife and children. But, um, and so it just sort of felt like a proper company, yeah. right? and so that was, that was really nice. It's because they, they obviously can do such clever things with audio that you're never quite sure who's there. Who is who, yeah. Who's, and, if and anyone's actually there. I mean, he's... Have either of you had experiences where you've had to record something in with someone who's you know not available to yes. kind of create the chemistry? Yes, that that, that has happened. That they've that they've, but not with a major character. No. Mm. Um, I think sometimes act, an actor isn't available on the the day that you do the recording, and so they um, they put somebody else in, and then they um, put in the real uh, person, Voice, yeah. the real um, actor. Um, when they, you know, when they're putting the whole thing together, um, yeah, that's happened to me, but not not with a major character, no. only with somebody who's playing a fairly small part. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you, are you ever amazed when you hear the results of what they do compared with what you? I'm always down amazed when I hear the yes, results. Yes, I'm always amazed. It's that thing of they, the, the God love the editors. They do just press. I, I always say they press the acting button yeah. because you're like you go, God, I was really good in that. That's great. And you know, and then actually you hear the sort of the original version. And you're like. Oh, right, OK, you've edited that beautifully. Thank you very <laughs> much. That was really not I do wonder how good. they turn so many of them out, because it must take, I always think it must take months to do one of the plays when you hear the work that goes into them. Mm. I think, an I think immense it, amount of work goes right. into it, an immense amount of work, yes. And they are terribly skilled, aren't they? Oh, well, yeah. extraordinary. Yeah. yeah, really, really impressive. They make us sound good. And, um, and, and, all the, and it's that thing of... Because it's almost like sort of acting against a, you know, a green screen or something, which I've never actually done, but I imagine is as difficult. The idea that, you know, you have to sort of imagine all these things. And I, I, I did, I heard one recently where, um, and I did it on this podcast, where uh, I was meant to faint. And I did what I thought was a fainting sound. And then re-listening to it, I went, I sound as though I've been punched in the stomach. That doesn't sound like a faint at all. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and there are times when you listen back and you go, oh, that's what you wanted. Sorry, didn't get that at all in recording. And so they have to do yeah. magical things with it. But yeah. Because you have to mention Toby, too, the... Oh, oh the, yeah. the studio, yes. yeah. Because if it, if it weren't recorded so brilliantly, it, it wouldn't come out anything like Very true, well. very true. Yeah. And I mean, Toby is, does a wonderful job. Yeah, there are, there are so many of them now. You, you obviously can't listen to them all. Do you, do you listen to many of the things that you've uh, I, I try those? and listen to the ones that I've done, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Maggie? I think I'm about five behind. So, some of them, but I don't listen to them all, I have to admit. No. When, when I've, it, it's, a, it's a piece of work and I've done it, and, and it goes in the drawer with the, with the others that they kindly send me the copy, um, uh, maybe some something will happen and somebody will remind me of a particular story and something that happened and I will listen to it then but in the ordinary way of things you know you're moving on yeah. mm. so you, d you don't tend to look back you tend to look forward